we're good to go. Have a great meeting. Uh, thank you, Daryl. I'd like to welcome everyone from the community for our general council <clears throat> for August the 8th, 2023. Um, I, as you know, we do have a, a member and he will be presenting uh, fairly soon in the chambers. Uh, first of all, I'd like to start with the adoption of the agenda. Um, can I have a mover to adopt agenda? Moved by Audrey. Could I have a seconder? Seconded by Sherry Lynn. All in favor? Any opposed? Hearing or seeing none, uh, motion is carried. Uh, we do have um, one of our First Nation members in the chamber with us tonight. Um, his name is Rick Claus. As you know, Rick, um, some of he has reached out to some of the councillors uh, before uh, with his um, concern. And uh, one of the problems that we had is that uh, trying to get everyone together. As you know, we do do, do a lot of traveling. And I do uh, realize, Rick, that uh, you made a good sacrifice tonight and are able to present uh, to, to the council, even though that we're not all in chambers. So anyway, no further ado, uh, Rick, uh, go ahead. You you have the floor. Um, and uh, some of us may not be familiar with your case, but if you could do a quick synopsis for us, that would be most helpful. Go ahead, Rick. Can you guys hear me? We're getting a lot of feedback. Presently, we're having some audio difficulties. Um, Sherry Lynn, is he able to use your, your mic or computer? There's feedback. We're getting, still getting a lot of echoing and feedback. Can you hear me now? Can you guys hear me now? Yes. There's no feedback now. So, no, okay. So Rick handed me um, these papers, some papers that were from um, December 18, 1986 regarding the bylaw for the Six Nations of the Grand River Indians. And also too, he handed me December 18, um, 1986, um, the Six Nations of the Grand River Indians regarding the bylaw. And he's questioning, is the bylaw the same and um, are we going to do anything about it? Is that correct? Yes. Because still um, um, having difficulty, I guess, or yeah, did you want to speak? He's here and he's not even from here. Can you guys hear him? Yes, yeah, Sherilyn, just for clarification, the, the bylaws concerning residency, right? Is that is that not correct? That's correct. The residency, the residency bylaw from 1986. Yes. Yes, okay. that's correct. And he wants to know if it still stands. Here yes. he comes here. There you go. Where are you? There you go. Yeah, well, I've got this papers and there's been different chiefs and council and everybody had it out there years ago. And why isn't nobody doing anything about it now? We have a guy that's here that's not from the reserve and the cops aren't doing nothing. And they even turned around and told him that he has a Hamilton address. Well. You got vehicles, you could drive to work. So what makes him so special? And why aren't these guys doing anything about it? Just causing more problems. Uh, there's a question by Helen. Go ahead, Helen. Did you want to sit down? No, uh, I just wanted to let Rick know council has done what we were supposed to do. We followed the residency bylaw. He was, he was given an eviction notice. And my understanding is the police delivered the eviction notice to him. 
and we've done what the residency bylaw requires. There's no more we can do with it. If he was evict, uh, given an eviction notice, why is he still here? Why didn't he leave? I guess maybe he doesn't want to. Well, then I, I guess you better make me the bylaw officer, then I'll get him out of there. To see according the, here, the residency bylaw doesn't say anything about kicking people off or anything. All we have to do is give them an eviction notice and the police deliver the notice. And that's what the residency bylaw no, says. They, the residency bylaw is no good. They didn't give him anything because he turned around and said he had a Hamilton address. So they left. Well, I could be because people do that too. They, they have addresses and they're saying, this is where I live and we have no way to dispute them. Well, the police should be able to find out where he is. Yep. They just go by the address, what he my says he has. My brother's got a question for you. Yep. And your name? Yes, Jerry. Okay, just one second, Greg. We got yep. um, uh, Rick's brother, Jerry. Go ahead. Okay, my question. <clears throat> Does bank council employees have special privilege? Crystal Burning is the one that allowed this person to be moving on that land to build on there. She has worked for a bank council all this time. She should know the policy. You have, um, long ago. Hmm? Bruce Longwood, her partner, he should also know the bylaw. And for them to support this person to be moving in and causing chaos to the family that's been there. And when you wanna look at it, elder abuse, my sisters are older than me. I'm 65, I got abused over there myself. The police didn't do nothing. And this is getting out of hand. This is getting too far. And if there's no uh, anything you're gonna hold uh, for Crystal and her part, then what's the use of even having bank counsel? We're following the residency bylaw. That's all I can say. It's been followed. The residency no, bylaw, it's been followed. No, you're wrong. <laughs> It's been followed. No, it's not. Otherwise he would be gone. He wouldn't be there. He wouldn't be flipping off. He wouldn't be doing all of these things that he does. We have him on film on camera because we had to put it there because my sisters are scared of what he does. Now they got a fence put up and they, it's not even on the right property. The survey that come in, the guy put it in from the middle of the bush. You're supposed to start at the road where the stakes are. They've moved the stakes. So I want it resurveyed then. I understood it's already been surveyed three times. No, 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 no. No. But it has been surveyed. It surveyed, but it was not by the what it called Canadian Surveyors Association. It might be Ontario's, but that don't mean nothing. May I interject here? Um, I did, Ken, did Ken Sandy have a look at that survey? Did you run it by Ken over at, at Lands? We was over there, then I even asked him about the other land around the corner I'm concerned about. That's not going to be up next later on after I settle this first. Yeah. The, we had other lands that was uh, sold and the lady that uh, put my grandmother's signature on there my grandmother could write. So they end up with another three acres. Now they've sold that land and there's three more houses built on our land. So how far do we have to go before we get justice for our land? And just after that meeting with Ken Sandy, what did, uh, what did, Ken, what did Ken say? Did he, did he inform you? Did he agree with what you're saying or, or did he not? Well, if his brother is one of the ones that bought the property down on second line, then when I mentioned it to him, he said he was gonna find out what was going on. Because why would they go and buy something that's not even legal and build on it, waste money? 
So, See, so Ken, is, Ken is not, he, Ken is not, he didn't agree with you. He didn't agree with what, what you were saying. Is that what you're yes, saying? Yes, he did. He, he agreed Agreed's? with me. Okay. Yes. He agreed with that, with this residency bylaw thing here, that if someone is on this reserve that's not supposed to be here, they are eligible for a fine and everything here. That one or is it this one? See, it says uh, liable for a conviction of a fine, thousand dollars or imprisonment. You know, what are you, reading? what are you reading? The residency bylaw. The 1985 residency bylaw doesn't say that. Yes, it does, lady. You, so maybe the 1985 residency if, bylaw? If you were here at the meeting, instead of being somewhere else, you could read this stuff. And that's the problem. You guys are all somewhere else. Is How it the 1985 no, residency bylaw? Will you let me speak? I'm telling you, I have the paperwork here that you guys have signed. Other councilors, other chiefs, there's signatures on it. What is this? Toilet paper you guys write now? The way I, I understand signed. it. Yeah, the, <laughs> the way I understand it is that, that these one, the the residents that are non-members that are that are on the reserve actually say they come on sometimes as guests, right? Is that is that not correct? And they'll no, he works here and he's been here 24 7. I understand that. I understand we got him on film. If you were down here, we could show you. I, I understand. I understand what you're saying and what what he's doing, but the residency residency bylaw doesn't uh, go as far as picking him up and removing him. We present him with that eviction notice by the police, and he's you know he's given time to leave. If he says he has an address that is off the res, then because we can only remove them when they have an address. Their license says they're a they have an address on the reserve. When they have the address off the reserve, you know, they're guests. And you I mean, understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. I understand 100% what you're saying. But the residency bylaw says that if he has an address here, yes, he can be removed, but he does not. He has an address on Hamilton. That's that's the loophole. Not according to papers, court papers, he has an address here. Oh, he does. And yes. you're able to furnish that. You're able to furnish Plus, my sister can furnish that when he went to court. He said he owns 1812 Cheesewood Road. Or 812 Cheesewood Road. And he's a non-member. Right. But he works on a reserve here, and I don't know. Who he thinks he is that he can stay here because we've got him on film 24 7. Hello. Audrey, Sorry. there's a question from Audrey. Go ahead, Audrey. Yep. Yes, I'd like <clears throat> I'd like to hear from Darren Jameson on this, our CEO. That was my question. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. Go ahead, Darren. Um well, I can I can appreciate the the frustration. Um, I think it really goes back to a, a bylaw that is flawed, and it, the flaw is enforcement. It's related to enforcement. We have a residency group working group, um, Rick, that is working on revising the bylaw because it is it is uh, insufficient. Uh, one of the key elements is the enforcement piece of it. So, looking at our you know we don't have our own court system here, so we have to kind of look at what court court systems we have to work with. And part of that is, you know, if they can prove that they have a residency in another area besides Six Nations, it's really difficult to prove otherwise. So it becomes almost like a case situation. You have evidence to, to the contrary. So I think that this is not this is not a done deal by any stretch. I think it's something that we need to continue to look at. And, you know, we have the residency bylaw is is under revision as we speak. Unfortunately, it's not it need it requires councils review and approval of any amendments. Part of that is, is, is designating an enforcement officer to actually, um, you know, implement the removal of someone. It's really difficult to do when you don't have your own court system. That's that's the big selling point that we have. So maybe I should just turn around, take it to the courts in Brantford, 
and get a court order for them to evict him here. That's that. What that, happens that. if he turns around and builds a house out here? Are you going to be able to get him off the reserve once he builds? It wouldn't. It would, I mean, if you if you took that path, um, that is that's an option for you to take, and he, you know whatever he's invested is lost to him. There's my sister. She knows more about it. She lives right there. What's up with his crap? Yep. Can you see? Go ahead. Yep. Go ahead. Hi. Uh, my name's Audrey Burning. Um, for I've been residing where at eight twelve no eight two four Chishwood Road for seven and a half years. My house was built there by I had to ask my older brother, my two older brothers, and my sister to let me build my house where it's at and they gave the okay everything was going good family was getting along and then uh bryce moves next door bryce and rainy and at first we thought hey it's this is this is awesome that niece living right next to us type of thing and then all of a sudden, Bryce comes up to me one day and he says, Audrey, I need to talk to you. And I said, sure, let's talk. So he, he said, well, we got to wait till Crystal gets done work, Crystal burning. So we waited. And then uh, I met with him and Crystal and he's got his cell phone and it's got a topographic map of the 830 property, 830 Chisoo Road property. And he shows Crystal, he said, look, Crystal, her house is on my property. And Crystal says, it is too. No, and then it's not. she start walking around my, my property on the 830 um, acreage. And <clears throat> the police get called. And the police look at it. And they're like, where did you get this topographic? map from and Bryce says from you guys and the Six Nations police said you're lying because we don't do topographic maps and then it escalated from there July 1st of last year um, there was a big incident happened at the house where I had to charge my sister for assault my other sister Dina Annette she got charged for assault on me because again Bryce started his shenanigans, so to speak, and everything got out of control. I have a video of um, George Annette going after my youngest son with a broken fiberglass hockey stick. The police were called because Dina assaulted me. And when the police arrived there, the police said to me, we are not going to charge Dina and George Annette because we have known them for years. Conflict of interest. So I pushed and I pushed and I kept pushing and pushing. Finally, Dina got charged. And now we thought everything was gonna be okay, but now Crystal Burning is harassing my youngest son. The son who got arrested on July 1st of last year for standing up for me because he saw what Crystal Burning, Dina Annette, George Annette, and um, Clarissa, which is Crystal's daughter, and oh, there was a few more people there, and they were like harassing me. And my youngest son saw it, so he stepped up and he got arrested. Dina and George, Crystal, they weren't even talking. They were no arrests made there. But like I said, I pushed and I pushed and I pushed. Finally, one day, this officer called me and said that Dina was going to be charged with assault. And there was a one year peace bond put on her. And Yeah, James has uh, my youngest son, my two sons actually, my oldest son and my youngest son, both were hit by drunk drivers years ago and they both have like head injuries. My youngest son had 
to go see a brain specialist because of uh, the trauma. It was when that, um, I don't know if you would remember when that Jonathan hit those, that carload of kids on third line. That was around 2010. But anyway, he's got a very big scar on his head and he's got a um, brain injury and he can't remember some things, some things he remembers. And, but with Crystal continuously harassing him, just recently, he had a breakdown because of all the harassment he is receiving from Crystal Burning and from Bryce and from Rainy. And he was taken and they did an evaluation and he's home now. But I'm not gonna let anybody hurt him anymore. I'm not gonna let anybody harass him anymore. But there's another question involved too. Rainy's sister, is living with a guy from New Credit, and they have come in and they've kind of uh, clearing the bush lot. And he's saying he's going to build there. Why can't he just build on his own reserve? Why do they keep squatting here? Something's got to be done. Otherwise, you might as well just invite anybody and everybody. Well, I'm very sorry to hear about uh, all the family injuries and also the disputes. Um, but uh, go ahead, Sherry. Sherry Lynn, you have you had a question. Um, yeah, I guess my question is for Darren. Um, can we do a follow up with the police with what what's been done? But also, can we um, can you have a chat and with um, Audrey uh, with Audrey regarding I guess these papers that she must have with his address on there and um, and get back to them to see what see what can be done and what's been done. Is that possible, Darren? Yeah, I mean, it's possible. I think it's important that we get all the facts, right? Let's go on a fact-finding mission here. That's always the issue. We seem to go into down a pathway and we're misinformed. So we appreciate Ricky bringing us forward and absolutely we can do that. We do have a justice department. Uh, they can do so much, but certainly we can follow up and they work with the police on these matters. So if you could leave the paperwork, with Tammy um, or someone there at the council chambers. I apologize, I'm, I'm, I'm also remote today. Apologize for that. We can certainly follow it up. And um, like I said before, this matter is not a dead matter. It's something that we will continue to activate. We do have a residency working group that's looking at all situations because they're all a little bit different. And we have to, you know, I, I apologize for this. We have to try and remove the family issues as much as we can because we have to look at what's, what's best for the community overall in these matters. I appreciate your frustration though. I, well, I hear you loud and clear. Years, it took me years even to get a place to live here. No, I understand. And there's yeah. places, other places here where there's some French people are living there for years. And why aren't they evicted? You know, why are all these people given all these privileges on our land? Yeah. And nobody's doing nothing. That's why I want something done with this residency bylaw. Because I got a lot of friends out there that want to come home. Come home to what now? There's nothing here. But yet, you guys still use our brand number. Greg, Audrey, Scott um, just wants to add something. Go ahead. Since I was assaulted by my sister, Dina, that I have been with the justice service down here on Six Nations. They're the ones who helped me get the peace bond and they know everything that has happened. Okay. So Darren also, can go and see them. Also, um, Greg? Yeah, go ahead, um, Shirley. Can we have a timeline because this has been dragging on for a long time. Over so year, no. Darren, can we have a timeline on this for, um, for Rick and his family? Two weeks? Yeah, I mean, we will certainly do what we can. So if, if all of they have, they have the paperwork with them now, if they can either make copies or or leave the what they have, then we can make copies. So there's two sets of all the information that we have. I can certainly reach out to Tim uh, Bucci and the people at Justice and, and make sure that we've got a complete picture. 
and follow this up. Two weeks is reasonable. I think uh, I'll reach out to Tim right this evening and let him know this is coming. When I first um, had everything happen, I kept notes and everything, and I did make copy for every single counselor, the chief and the executive director to the chief, and I left them here at the council house, at council here. So I don't know what happened to them from there. It had all the information, everything on it, pictures, everything. We can follow up on that as well. We Maybe if we haven't got the mail or they're here once in a while, they get the get the information. Yeah. We well, we do appreciate you coming in and Rick. I know you I've talked to you directly, Rick, a couple of times. And and uh I understand I appreciate all, all the problems that you're having. I understand that it's, you know, it's an ongoing concern and it's a very, very serious. And that I, I know Darren, he'll, we'll do our due diligence. We'll look into this completely, including the residency bylaw. And we'll get back to you with, with a, some type of an action, some type of action, so. Great. Yeah, go ahead, Sherilyn. This I add for um, the 22nd is two weeks. So if can be heard, can you start? Be contact before the 22nd. Okay. Thank you. Because I'm getting tired of this abuse. I'm an elder. And this is the kind of abuse I'm getting even from this band council. Because they're not doing nothing. I'm lucky to have a place here now. I've waited for years. You've been using my band number for almost 70 years. For what purposes? Well, we hear your concerns, Rick. Um, we'll we'll be following up. We'll be following up with you. I want to hear from you, and I want to see you, the band council here in person within two weeks. Not the Zoom, not anything else. If you can't talk to me or in Greg, person, I think you should resign. Greg, I'd like to say something. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, sorry, it's no, no, sorry. Yeah, we just got into our room here um, and gonna walk in. Uh, thanks, Dick, and, and your sister for coming in, and I understand, too, as Greg had said, you got a lot of frustrations. We do, too. We do, too, with so many crises in, in what band council uh, certainly deals with, and I do believe we've been lax in, in dealing with that residency bylaw. We have been. To me, I'd just like to strike it out completely and start all over. We need a bylaw officer, and we haven't done that either. We're coming to the end of our term. So I want to thank you for coming forward and having the patience to come, even though when I, you know that it's hard to get all counselors, as was mentioned. So, yes, we've been using your band number and we're treating, you know, people not as they should be treated. Like we need more staff. We need more staff to do different kind of work. And as well, Greg I'm tired said, of this well, abuse, Melba. I'm tired, of this, I'm tired of this abuse now, especially since you've been using my band number. Yeah. When I ask for questions or help, I get nothing. All I yeah. get is words and all I do is say sorry. You know what sorry is? Sorry is an excuse for ignorance. Yeah. Well, uh, we still are sorry for our ignorance, uh, Dick, but we'll try to do something. And I realize this, these disputes are uh, throughout the reserve in various ways. And we're going to try again, as, as T Sherry Lynn said, we got a deadline here. What are we going to do about it? Let's so move why, ahead. I got a question. Why are you guys keep running off to somewhere else? What purpose is it helping us here at Six Nations for you guys being off for Sosnik? How is it benefiting us? Well, it is benefiting us because a lot of things that are on that agenda is related to what we're dealing with, such, such as hunting and fishing rights. So when you get other communities, uh, uh, actually um, supporting each other, then you have strength. It's like you, you need support in what you're coming forward for. So we're gonna try to help you if we can and your family as well as other First Nations and our community that are dealing with things that are related to abuse, as you said, it is abuse. I, I, I agree with you. 
It's neglect okay. and abuse. I want you all here on August, what did you say, 22nd? Or? That's when the phone call is. Yeah. That's when to get back to you. To get back to me. Mm -hmm. I want everybody here. I don't want to be talking on this. You know how frustrating it is? And like, how do I know where you even are? You can say you are. You can say all kinds of things you are. Like the other day, I was asking to the, the, talk to the chief. So I go and call around and see if anybody sees him. He's out at the golf course. So how can you justify getting paid for being out there golfing when he's supposed to be here representing us? Well, um, it's Melba again. I don't know anything about um, Mark golfing when he's supposed to be, you know, at the office. I don't know anything about it. And I'm sure he's never other been at the office. Don't know I've that either. Here. I've called here dozens of times to talk to him. He's never been here. I even told you, and you said you would make sure that he talked to me. Well, how long do I have to wait? Till the next election, if he gets in, maybe I'll see him then. Greg, it's Hazel. Yeah, go ahead, Hazel. Yeah, I just want to make the comment with regard to being in office. And I fully agree with you that we should all be in that office. It seems like we've been out of the council chambers for so long through COVID, through renovations. And we're still, I don't know what the excuse is right now, but I, I fully agree that we should all be within those, those uh, doors of the council chambers. And it, it seems to me, it's a better way to support the community when they have issues and you're within the uh, hearing voice of the person that that is um, having a complaint or whatever. So I think with that, we council re really needs to rethink this working from home or away business. I'm not there. I'm not at home right now because we're off to Gunawagi to attend uh, Iroquois caucus meetings that deal with a lot of issues that that Melba has already said. And what we get here, we bring it back because we're looking for better information too to help the people back home. Thank you. Thank you. I got a couple of people you, that are having problems with their hunting and they've got their weapons confiscated. So are well, you- Well, that's, that's on the agenda tomorrow. That's what we'll be talking about. We're here? In Ganawagi. Ganawagi. Yes. So we There's all have several to issues there to hear what's going on. We'll be bringing back that information to. Well, I want a copy of it, just so, to be sure that you got it. Or actually, all right. We'll send a message. We'll there, send like, the message. You can tell me a story, like you know, you could be wherever. So why should people here vote for you if you're not even here representing them? That's a good what summation you, for sure. For? Yeah, we try to, uh, Dick, it's Melba. We try to attend every meeting that's possible for us. Uh, so we really want to thank you for coming forward. Thanks, Audrey. And again, sorry, even though you don't like the word, Dick. Sorry for what is happening within your family. So we'll do, do the best we can. <laughs> thank you. You know how funny that is? I should put that in the paper. Next time, I think I'm going to bring the radio station here. Put on air. Yeah. Well, the papers are with us. The papers are with us, Dick. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Audrey. <laughs> now, as far, Darren, is, is just a review, Darren, that um, you'll do some due diligence on this and then be, be back to us on by August 22nd. Is that not correct? That's correct. And um, I guess the issue with the paperwork that's gone missing or what have you, we, we may have an outreach to them prior to that if there's some missing pieces. Uh, that's good. Thank you, Darren. Yep. Uh, now, do, do we have do we need a mover for uh, his presentation as information or as a um, further action point on this uh, due August 22nd? Do we need a mover or a seconder on that? I'll need some uh, advice here. Audrey? Yeah, I think we should have a motion on it. And I think we should be writing down what we just told him just now. And I think that's one way to make sure that we follow up. Thank you. Yeah. 
Good. Because uh, that's what I thought. I thought that maybe we should have a motion to to actually express exactly what uh, what Darren should be doing in the next uh, two weeks, so that we can uh, further up on this, further uh, give an even get to an action point on this matter. Um, so, um, do I have a do I have a mover here to? Um, I'll move it, Sherilyn. Yeah, to allow Darren to continue on with the due diligence. Okay, moved by Sherry Lynn. Can I get a seconder, Audrey? Uh, Greg, just before yeah. you finalize that motion, he's asking that all the councillors be within the chambers on that next time. Are we agreeing on putting that in our motion to all be present as he's requested? Well, I agree yes. with him. We can't do that because we might be away on business. Audrey. Uh, it's Melbo. Yeah, some sometimes we have emergencies is is a problem too within our families, for example. So I think we'll do our best certainly to have all counselors in place. I just got a message here that said Hazel, you will be, will be at ammo. Well, as long as you're away at a meeting, it doesn't mean that you're just tuning in from from your house or wherever. As long as you're at a meeting, that should be sufficient. If anyone don't like that idea, that's just too bad. But as far okay. as um, just not being there and just being home, that's, I think we should, we should call that as to what it is now and get everybody back in the chambers. But do we have to put a date on it? Can we just not uh, say that the next time we are all able to be in the chambers that we can meet with Rick at the soonest possible time frame? If it happens to be August, I don't know, 23rd or 25th or whatever date that we can all arrange and that it's agreeable to Rick and Audrey that we meet with them within a reasonable time frame. Yeah. Can we, can we put that in? Because we do have that aim, of I'll be away as well. So if we could say, listen, Rick, we will be in chambers. We, all, we won't be traveling. And then we could meet uh, Audrey and himself at that time. Is that acceptable? I think that's very acceptable. Okay. Do we have to put that in a motion as well? It's not acceptable to me. I don't like being dictated to by angry community members. Or we could just say the majority of council. Right. We could say the majority of council, we don't have to be 100% and say, um, you know, everyone, because you're right, we do have other commitments and it's very difficult to get all councillors in uh, at the same time. Is, is that agreeable? Um, okay, Audrey, so we could put that in the motion that the majority of the councillors be present. <laughs> Is that acceptable to the mover and the seconder? Yes, I'm good. Yes, I'm good. All in favor? Any, any opposed? Hearing or seeing none, motion is carried. Uh, moving on to uh, item number five, the adoption. Are there any more delegations or presentations? I believe there are not. I think uh, Rick was the only one. So we can move on to the adoption of the general council meetings of July 25th, 2023. Yeah, you should probably waive second reading on that last motion. No, there's a lot of direction on that. Okay, yeah. Uh, can we waive second reading on that, on that motion? I'll move. Move, move by Sherry Lynn, seconder. Second by Audrey. All in favor? Any opposed? Hearing or seeing none, motion carry. Okay, thank you for that, Nathan. Uh, now to move on to the adoption of the general council minutes of July 25th. Can I have a mover for that? I'll, I'll move. Moved sure. by Sherry Lynn, a seconder. Why 
Second. Second read. Seconded by Kerry. All in favor? Any opposed? Hearing or seeing none, the motion is carried. Uh, let's moving on to the recommendation number six, uh, the recommendation from Six Nations Cannabis Commission. Uh, do we have um, someone on the line to address that? Because it's um, it's the appointment of a uh, new member to the Cannabis Commission. Her name is Jamie Lee Baxter. Do we have someone from the Cannabis Commission to give us just a quick overview? Daryl, is there anyone on the line? I'll move, I don't think they're on. All I seen was just the information from it. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, she will be appointed. I think the, it's in your Dropbox, her, I think she's well-versed in um, mental health and mental health issues. And I think she'd be a good addition to the Cannabis Commission. So I'll, I'll read it out. Uh, whereas the Six Nations of the Grand River Elected Council has authority to appoint commissioners to the Six Nations Cannabis Commission. Whereas the Six Nations Cannabis Commission has completed the vetting process of Jamie Lee Baxter, therefore be it resolved that the Six Nations of the Grand River Elected Council accept the recommendation from the Six Nations Cannabis Commission to appoint Jamie Lee Baxter as a commissioner effective immediately. Could I have a mover? I, I, I moved. Uh, moved by Sherry Lynn, a seconder. And Michelle said she'd second. And seconded by Michelle. All in favor? Any opposed? Hearing or seeing none, motion is carried. Do we need a second reading on that? Um, I'll wave second reading and also second. Michelle will too for second. Okay. Seconded by uh, Michelle. All in favor? Any opposed? Hearing or seeing none, motion is carried. Uh, just moving on to updates from the office of the CEO. Um, hey, okay, hey, Greg. Yeah, there, there's also an item in the in camera, so there may be others that we can add there. Um, but just to, for community's benefit, uh, we are going ahead with our annual general assembly on just a reminder on August the 24th uh, at the community hall. Uh, we have we will have booths set up from all of our departments. Um, with information, uh, we will have a presentation, not only just in terms of what has happened uh, during this this term of council, but also the future plans that have been developed. Um, and we will have maps of the community um, in different rooms, and it'll be very interactive. It'll be more of a celebration to come together as a community again, similar to our healing event. We'll have food, we'll have music. So we're just really encouraging folks to come out to that. Uh, so we're asking for folks, there will be ads coming out the next week and also follow it obviously right up until the event uh, to start at 4, 4 p.m. and uh, go until about 9 because at the end of the evening, we're going to have a drone show. And if everyone remembers, that's to promote the Walk the Track event, a friendship walk that we're planning for September, the weekend of September the 22nd. Uh, so details, further details will come uh, forward from that. Uh, so that's that's the program uh, at this point for August the 24th at the community hall. Uh, one item that we had to discuss at a previous meeting was uh, we want to have not only the presentation uh, available for community, which we will all be present to provide uh, both politically and administratively, but also a booklet, uh, which is more or less a report card, but also the future plans will be embodied it will be part of that presentation. Um, that is uh, very much in the works. Uh, I expect that, that will it has to be completed by within the next week in order to get to the printers in time. So that and the companion document along with that will be our audited financial statements. So those will both be available at the AGA on August the 24th. So those are the sort of the key um, updates in terms of for, for communities of uh, information. I don't believe there's anything further that's really pertinent. Um, there's a lot of work going on, obviously, behind the scenes with all of that. So uh, looking forward to that event. We haven't had one in a long time. Great, great. Thanks, Darren. Um, and that's just for information. Um, 
Now the uh, the thing too is also the the, the the walk the track too would be a very informative um, discussion, especially for any volunteers that might want to be involved. And I think uh, that's going to be uh, I think something to look forward to. Um, do we need a mover to accept uh, Darren's report as information? I'll move it, Sherry Lynn. Move by Sherry Lynn, a seconder. Uh, second by Audrey. All in favor? Any opposed? Hearing or seeing none, motion is carried. Um, thank you, Darren, for that. Um, just in uh, terms of scheduling coming up, as uh, Melba has pointed out, that uh, we have some representatives down at the Iroquois Caucus in Ganawagi. Uh, there are some important issues that um, will be coming up. I know um, that's the chief is on the road. And also um, there are some topics that will be dis discussed will be uh, such things as uh, mental health, uh, of course, the harvesting issue. We're gonna be looking at some of these new initiatives around the Grace Lakes uh, that may be included in terms of environment and also some of the things that have been happening at the AFN and uh, the Chiefs of Ontario. I, and also we'll be addressing uh, the Métis issue as well. And so that'll be all information that will be brought back to the community. Um, there was a question, uh, Helen. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm on a meeting tomorrow with the Employment and Training Working Group from Chiefs of Ontario that I had put on. That's tomorrow and then Wednesday. Thursday, there's a tax commission meeting. And I had sat on a tax meeting committee before with the Chiefs of Ontario, so I guess this might be a carry on from that. So I would be attending that as well on Thursday. They're all on Zoom. Great, all important issues. Unless, unless I don't know whether Tammy think those of Mark had want, asked someone else to sit there. Oh, no, I see here. I do not see Tammy on the line. Is Tammy there in the chambers? Yep, yep, yes. So has Mark asked anyone to sit there? Or... I don't know. I'm not aware of anybody that he's asked. Uh, well, when is, I don't have any information on the meeting either, so I can inquire. And then yeah. let, let you know if there's a Zoom. for somebody to attend if he's not available. And there's Zoom stuff anyway, but I'll, I can attend. So yeah. that's Friday. One Thursday and one Friday. Oh, okay, great. Uh, thank you, uh, Helen. Um, <clears throat> now, do we need, we don't need a motion to do, uh, to accept that as information because we haven't got any reports yet. Um, yeah, I don't have any information to, to send either, so. Okay, that's fine. Um, so we can go on to the motion to adjourn the in uh, the um, adjourn to in camera. Motion. Go ahead, uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead, Kerry. There is an item seven that ratification of the email poll. I have that on my agenda. I don't know if you do. Uh, I do not have that. Item seven is updates from the office of the CEO as provided by Darren. Yeah, Carrie's right. It's a revised one. It's a ratification of the uh, email poll regarding um, the athletes. Yeah. Yeah, the athletes. So I guess moved by Helen, second by Carrie to waive second reading. I'll read it to you. The Six Nations of the Grand River Elected Council to provide a total of 6,000, uh, 1,500 each for four Six Nations athletes. And their purpose will be traveling to participate in the Canadian Nationals Tournament in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan from August 8th to the 13th. And that the source of the funds from the OFNLP and the donation fund. Moved by Helen Miller, second by Carrie. So wait, and wave second reading. So we need second reading on that? Um, we just need to um, move it first and then second reading. Okay. I'll move it. I'll move it. Moved by Helen. Seconder. 
Yep, I will. Second by Carrie. All in favor? And then I'll move Any second opposed? reading. None. And yeah, motion to move second reading. Yep. Moved by Helen, second by Carrie. All in I, favor? I, just, I have one question. Sure, go ahead. Were the uh, athletes able to get this money? Because I know it was like really time sensitive. I don't Were they, know. Maybe somebody from the office, admin, finance, maybe? Well, Shirley told me that there was no problem with giving up the money. It's just this was the problem was we had to make sure we did this, this meeting. Oh, yeah. She said it wouldn't stop them from getting the money just because we hadn't done this. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. So, Helen, are you aware that they did receive the money? Um, so as far as I know, they're gone. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, Greg, uh, Shirley said they did receive the money. Okay, great. Thank you. <clears throat> so, all in favor? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Michelle. Oh, no. I deal with that one. I want to talk about the other teams. Okay. All in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Uh, okay, Michelle. <laughs> And so when that those emails were going around last week, um, the chief had put on a player and I had said we should be supporting all our players. So I know that hasn't come forward. They have since gone. Can we support them? I can. That was for the team that went to Calgary. There was 11 of our players that went with the coach. And that was an amount of? The same thing, what we were doing for the four girls that are going to Saskatchewan or Virginia. Really so that yeah, was in, in a total of $6,000. Is that not correct? Or I don't understand the amount. That's, that's just basically it. Uh, let's do the paperwork and recommendations for Okay, so Tammy's giving us a process here, so we should follow the process and they apply and we bring it to council. Okay. Right, right. I always had a question about this, although I, I, I do believe we should support our athletes 100%. Because um, a lot of these, um, and all our families have had uh, athletes play at high levels, either in region, province, Canadian, international championships i i've often wondered in that i like i said i'm in 100 percent of supporting our athletes because we do come from a very athletic uh culture um and often too due to circumstance we just do not have the funding or the the, the families don't have the means sometimes to send a lot of these top level athletes to these games or to these competitions and uh, i think wholeheartedly that we should we should support them uh, my question is, is a lot of times, too, is that some of these teams have uh, have very big budgets. Um, some of these teams may have budgets uh, for travel and they may even have bu budgets for hotels and foods. I know they don't really like covering parents. I know parents usually have to pay their own way, which is is right, you know, but um, it's sometimes, you know, in the in what I think is I always like to know that some of these teams that are put together uh, get money from sport. Uh, Aboriginal sports circle, they get it from the province, they'll get it from federal sports, uh, uh, I would say, organizations, and that they can they can actually get a lot of little extra support. I know, well, actually, my daughter did so. Um, but we did have to do a lot of fundraising as well. Um, if you go to somewhere like the SO Cup, you don't really know you're going to the SO Cup until a week before. So you, you really have to scramble uh, for funding. And I understand how difficult it is when you get selected one or two weeks before and then all of a sudden have to fly halfway across the country. So, um, but I, I do always think that we should always inquire too on these really high level teams, you know, what type of budgets they have, you know, because it's important that they even, they even go and vet and, and find money as well. So. It's just, and also we should do our due, due diligence on um, pushing 
pushing for these teams to have the funding because I know some of the non-native teams do. So that was just my thoughts. But anyway, uh, Helen? I had suggested in one of my emails when this came up, I think we need to develop a sports donation fund strictly for sports. But yes. the donation fund that we have doesn't fit some of these expenses because like you said, you have to fly so far away and whatnot. So I really think we need to start a sports fund because that seems to be the majority of where money is going to help the different teams. So that's something we need to think about. Right, and we, can always, we can't always we uh, can always rely on other organizations to, to help. To we, help might be able, we might be able to go out and get donations for it from the community too. Very much, and we could even have a, a, in reserve. We could have this fund in reserve to be, to to be used when necessary. Anyway, well, thank you very much. So, any further comments, questions? Okay. Uh, now we're at the motion to adjourn to in camera. I'll move it, Sherilyn. Uh, moved by Sherilyn, seconded by uh, Michelle. All in favor? Any opposed? hearing or seeing none motion is carried thank you very much community uh it was a longer meeting than we had expected um but um yeah we will now switch into uh, in camera and thanks again <laughs>